Alrighty everyone, as I'm sure we all witnessed, the US Open was absolutely amazing. Literally all weekend from Greco all the way to freestyle. However, that tournament really got me thinking. Like we had high schoolers who literally just beat former D1 All-Americans that are way more than four years older than them, now losing to other wrestlers the same age level as them. Like Jax Forrest got taken out by Seth Mendoza, who to give him credit, jumps levels every single year and he's a blast to watch as well. But I don't really think a lot of people saw that coming based on Jack Forrest's Olympic trials run. The US Open this year, and well, every year, is truly something special. And we didn't even have our senior level athletes battling at it. The high schoolers and young college stars really stole the show this weekend. I normally don't even watch U15s either, but I was really wrapped around that as well. What I'm getting at is high school wrestling continues to evolve and it's really fun to see. Like usually when you watch U17 a couple years ago, it was the top high schoolers and they still needed some time to develop before they were college ready. And with U20s, it was usually the college guys owning the show. Now there's high schoolers really making a name for themselves and taking out senior level athletes so it's really exciting to see and i can't wait to see some of these young stars on the world stage in the next couple months but to round back to the point of the video that i was really thinking about this weekend is the u.s open truly the toughest high school wrestling tournament can we even consider it a pure high school tournament when you think about it or is there another beast at the top of the mountain for toughest high school tournament well i say we all sit back and relax and take a deep dive into some of the best high school wrestling tournaments. Also, if you have your own thoughts, because there is so many great high school wrestling tournaments, feel free to leave a comment in the comment section below. A lot of you have your own thoughts on some of the tournaments I mentioned as well. Now, how I'll be writing this is basically going through a few tournaments that usually get coined the toughest high school tournament during their weekend of fame during the year. Then I'll be listing pros and cons along with finding common wrestlers throughout all of them. Now, don't be shy and subscribe while we list the toughest high school wrestling tournaments in America. Let's start with the tournament that is fresh in everyone's mind, the US Open, which every year I think grows in size more and more. The biggest positive of this tournament is it brings out a lot of the best competition, like the cream of the crop. Like this past weekend, Q20s, 57 kilograms and 65 kilograms had some of the biggest high school names in the sport right now. We also got to see those names compete against some of the best college competition at their age level as well. Which also brings up the point of, well, is the US Open a pure high school tournament if college guys are competing at it? To be picky, I guess not, but I can tell you this much, U17 is for sure a pure high school wrestling tournament, and it still brings out the best competition to make the world team. Which, quick sidebar, how about those Rainey brothers at the 60 kilogram bracket for U17s? For those who don't know, they are twin brothers and they battle it out for the world spot, which you really don't get a lot in the sport. So pretty cool stuff. I think it's almost more impressive though that Jaden Rainey was at 55 kilograms for Greco and still made the finals up at 60 kilograms, which is way more than a 10 pound difference. Anyway, U17 can easily be called the toughest tournament. You get the best athletes 17 and under trying to make a world team, massive brackets that test them all plenty and so much more. However, I still have to mention some cons of the tournament. For one, it is only freestyle and Greco, so some athletes might not participate, which is pretty rare normally. The best wrestlers normally do freestyle anyway. I also don't want to say it's super close, but it's definitely close enough to the folk style season to bring up some concerns. Like for example, I watch some athletes compete here at the US Open, and then they look like a way better freestyle wrestler by the time, let's say, Fargo rolls around, just because they've been participating at a lot more. But that's kind of also a real nitpicky thing. I mean, the date's the date. However, I think the biggest con that really hurts this tournament in the conversation of toughest high school wrestling tournament is the separation in division to where there's no true mega division with all the high school athletes in it. For example, U17 didn't have stars like Forrest, Bassett, or Lilladol, who are still in high school, I might add. Plus, there is some potential young freshmen in U15 that also were in the U17 weight classes. These cons are very nitpicky, I understand it. That's kind Kind of what makes this tournament special is picking our age level world teams but i at least had to bring it up to play devil's advocate toward the us open a little bit either way if you're looking for a challenge for your high school wrestler or if you're a go-getter high school wrestler that's looking for a challenge the us open is for sure a must-stop tournament in good old las vegas 
usually. I mean, by the time you watch this video, the destinations could change. But for now, it's in Las Vegas. Let's move on. Alrighty, talked a little freestyle. Now let's jump into some folk style and an in-season tournament. Why not? I think one thing Iron Man has going for itself is the restriction of entries. Now that also hurts the tournament in the conversation, but we'll get back to that in a second. I also was going to include Powerade in this section, but you'll have to wait till the honorable mention, so stick around ahead of the video for some of those. So for those who don't know about Iron Man, every high school that's entered doesn't get to bring their entire team, even though it is an in-season tournament. Every team gets a certain amount of wrestlers they can bring. So for example, a team with one guy ranked in the country might only get to bring that one wrestler. Teams like Blair and Wyoming Seminary, on the other hand, can usually bring their entire team. Granted, most of the time, they have several of the top-ranked guys anyway, so it usually works out in that aspect anyway. However, by the same token, Token that helps them bring in all these top 20 wrestlers in the country, or at least try to bring them all in. That coin also hurts Iron Man since it is an in-season tournament, so some heavy hitter states can't even travel to the event. Yes, you do get your top dogs like the prep schools, Pennsylvania, Illinois, and of course the host school Ohio, but states like Wisconsin and Iowa are stuck in their own borders. In the past years, the results of this tournament would have been drastically different if those two states could have participated in the long run. Overall though, an invite to Iron Man is still a huge deal, and they they try their best to make it one of the toughest tournaments in the country. And in my opinion, it still is one of the toughest year over year. But in my honest opinion, I think with the state restrictions and well, the fact that some teams just decide not to go, it's probably not the toughest. But hey, Marcus Blaze took his only two official high school losses here, so what do I know? Back to the freestyle scene, and I would be a dummy not to include this tournament that every high school prospect thinks about, the Freestyle and Greco National Tournament, otherwise known as Fargo. One massive, and I mean massive positive for this tournament, is the national draw it brings. For starters, almost every state goes to Fargo and in a team setting. This is pretty rare when you really think about it. Yes, I'm sure every state is represented at your NHSCAs and whatnot like that, but at Fargo, for the most part, it's the very best ballying out with their team, which is really cool to see. The only con for Fargo is very similar to the US Open. The divisions are split, so there's usually 8th grade through sophomores battling it out, and then juniors up to seniors battling it up in the next age division. With that said, it is still a loaded field, and I mean, Yanni Diakamahalas never won Fargo, so no matter what division you're in, it's going to be tough. Plus, another thing that kind of lowers the waters for Fargo a little bit is usually the world teamers for U17 and the U20 teams don't attend since they're either at their world championships or training for them. Overall though, I love Fargo, and if you can qualify at any skill level in high school, I would attend this event. The first time Ben Asker went to Fargo, he went 0-2, but that experience alone drove him to what he ended up becoming. Now, one of the big cons for the US Open and Fargo normally doesn't get noticed until a particular tournament, and that tournament is my pick for easily the toughest high school tournament in the land. Super 32. Now when we really dive into the numbers, year over year we see high Fargo All-Americans not even make it close to the second day of Super 32. You see number one ranked wrestlers get dethroned, and when you look back at old brackets, it is hard not to find at least one wrestler per weight who found their way on the NCAA podium. I'm serious, look back through some of these old brackets, it's a lot of fun. The only two real cons I guess I have is the location and the time of year. Year. It is an amazing preseason tournament to get the rankings and prospect lists in check, but it is during football season, so you miss out on some of the top bigger boys in the country. Usually the higher in size of this tournament, the smaller the brackets are. It is also in North Carolina, so some western states have to pay a pretty penny to get there, but at the same time, the big dogs still show up, so I really don't think it's that big of an issue for them. A couple years ago, Super 32 wasn't as big as it was now, however, if you're a top ranked wrestler, it's hard pressed not to find them at Super 32. I mean, now it's getting so hard to register for Super 32, there's like so many qualifying tournaments to get some early access into the tournament. Overall though, Super 32 is 
easily my pick for the toughest high school wrestling tournament. And if you disagree or, well, have your own thoughts, let me know in the comment section below. Now let's talk about some honorable mentions real quick. Also, if you enjoyed this video, please feel free to leave a like and hit that subscribe button. Also again, don't forget to leave a comment on your favorite high school wrestling tournament or what you think is the toughest high school wrestling tournament. And now, as I fade out, enjoy some honorable mentions. For starters, like I said earlier, we have Powerade. I honestly think this is PA's version of Iron Man, so instead of a lot of Ohio placers trying to knock off some top 20 wrestlers, we get a lot of PA wrestlers trying to take out some top 20 wrestlers. Sometimes the finals are literally the exact same from a week prior at Iron Man, and I think it's more of a East Coast presence at Powerade than Iron Man, but it really varies year to year. I also think you could include New Jersey, Pennsylvania, Ohio, Illinois, and so many other states organizations into the talk but it's a little too inconsistent and no matter which state you're in you're gonna get a weight class that just isn't as deep as some others. I think Journeyman and Freestyle and Folk Style is an impressively cool tournament that groups kids together based on skill and it guarantees some awesome matchups. Finally, there is the PNL, which if you never heard of it, it's a tournament ran by the top clubs in America. So like AWA with Ben Askren, M2 with David Taylor, Izzy Style, and a few others. Similar to the Journeyman setup to where it's almost literally the exact same, to where they group everyone up by skill set to guarantee great matchups and, well, a lot of fun. I seriously love the idea so much I almost included it in the video, but I'll end the video with that instead. So now, with all that said, everybody, thank you all very much for watching and take care.